Hello and welcome to where I find my ships. Today, we're going to be looking at the UC Vigilance. And this video is going to be a complete guide on how to one, find the UC Vigilance, how to get it into your inventory, how to make it a home ship by changing some of the components using mods. We're going to take a good look at all its components, its weapons, go over it in detail. So this will be your complete guide to everything you need to know with the UC Vigilance. It is the UC's faction's legendary ship. You'll have a lot more interaction with this ship throughout Starfield. You can fly pretty easily, but I have to say, I thought the Shroud Bearer, which is another legendary ship, had bad mobility. But the UC Vigilance is a whole other category. It is an absolute freight train. Just wait and see. This thing is a shocker. In this video, we're going to go through a bit more of a deeper dive and have a look at the UC Vigilance. Now, you can already enter the UC Vigilance, so we'll mostly focus, just have a quick look at some of the weapons some of the major components. And at the end, I'll show you how to get this yourself. Okay, let's get into it. First off, where to find the UC Vigilance? Well, if you haven't done any of the uh, Crimson Fleet or System Defense quest lines, you're gonna find it in the Sol System, the fourth planet from the sun. Mars will have a moon called Phobos. This is where you'll find the Vigilance. Hard to miss, but honestly, I didn't actually notice it was there for quite some time, so there you go. Now, if you have gone into a bit of the quest into the Crimson Fleet or System Defense, you'll be able to find it in the Arrhenia system, which is to the right, slightly down from Alpha Centauri. And you want to check the orbit of the planet uh, Arrhenia 2. It should have the ship icon, so you won't be able to miss it. So it's probably the easiest of all the legendaries to locate because it's always pretty much got a set position. And here it is, the UC Vigilance. Now, we can register it for, you know, like a measly 450,000 roughly. Jeans, not cheap, these bad boys. Now, that is through the technician, but I don't think it changes even if you register it uh, by yourself. It's pretty much a set registration fee. Now, if we go into the ship builder, take a look at this. The mobility, minus 32. So let me show you what that's like. This is the UC Vigilance trying to turn as quick as it can. It is by far the worst and slowest ship of, in terms of mobility that I've ever flown. I thought you could have a mobility of zero. I didn't realize it would go negative. So there you go. It's an absolute freight train. This is the worst one to fly. It's just, it's kind of a really terrible experience, really. But back to the uh, ship builder. So it does have a jump range of 17. Not the greatest. It means you can't really get into the far distant uh, systems but it seems to be a common trait between the class m's it has a max crew of eight which is surprising considering how big it is and a hull of 5282 so pretty insane hulls there and the mass is quite staggering as well now so same as the other legendary ship there's a bunch of errors i am going to spend some time going through this and trying to figure out how to bypass this so we can actually muck around with this a lot more which will be a lot of fun now taking a look at some of the components We've already taken a look at the 8780 mag target reactor. It is a class M, of course, power generation of, of 64. Starship design rank four, funnily enough. Now, the sad, disappointing thing is that the uh, engines don't actually have any thrust, apparently. There's no actual, from at least from the front end, we can't see any of the thrust or maneuvering thrust details. The engines, however, look pretty cool. This is no Shroud Bearer, which had a really cool, interesting look to it. This is much more of a streamlined. And I guess when you think about it, being so slow and turning so, sl so slow, maybe that's a bit more realistic. But yeah, unfortunately, we don't have much information on these engines. So I'm sure down the track, we'll be able to have a look at those a lot closer. So otherwise, all these other components are all class M. They are empty, so you can't actually there's nothing inside them. We've got the fuel here on the top, nothing really on the bottom. Obviously no landing gear, no means to actually enter the ship itself. So do note, so I'm pretty sure I thought this cockpit we could access, but this is apparently only unique to these legendary ships. So if you really wanted to, you could delete all these other bits and build your own ship using this rare cockpit. But again, if you have mods, you'll probably be able to get this, no worries. So the UC Vigilance looks like it may be the longest out of all the legendary ships. I'll have to confirm that down the track, but that's what it appears to be. Now, if we have a quick look at the weapons of the Reza 10 Petahert Phase Laser Turrets. These are supreme auto-firing turrets. This is one of the best. But the UC Vigilant is equipped with three of the Reza 10 attached, one facing forward and then two facing out. The Reza 10 is a Class B, has a power requirement of four. So typically you would only be able to put three of these on your vessels with not a bad rate of fire of five and a value of 35,000 a pop with an unlock of 60. Range is a little bit average at a thousand. Next we'll take a look at the ballistic weapon. So it's a pretty average ballistic weapon. The Jushaku FE 
RF Rapid Railgun Turret. Now the auto firing turret, which is a class B, requires a power of three with a rate of fire of five and a reasonable value of 20,000 and a level unlock of 25. UC Vigilance has four of these attached. So it's got two on each side, just pointing out, which would do a combined hull damage of 360 and a combined shield damage of 100. And lastly, the most potent weapon it has attached is the PBO 100 Auto Neutron Turret. Another auto firing particle weapon, which is a class B with a power requirement of three, rate of fire of five, and a value of 16,600 with a level unlock of 25, giving it a combined hull and shield damage of 320. There's four attached, so one facing forward, one facing back, two mounted on the side. So those are weapons covered. Nice uh, bit of space here for cargo. But I did forget to mention there is the NG400 grab drive, the so same as the other legendary ships, class M even at a pretty average jump range. Now, what is interesting about the UC Vigilance is uh, one of the few legendary ships that has a shield attached. Got the Inviolate SG M30 shield generator. This is a pretty potent shield. If you could attach this to your Class C, pretty gnarly. Just to give you an idea, the Class C shield with the most health is 1600, which is the Assurance SG 1800 shield generator. However, this Class M shield <laughs> gives you 4,790 shield health. That's incredible. It also has the regen delay destroy and re regen delay damage. That's very reasonable with the regen rate of 2% and a hull of 185. It does only give you a max power of 11, but still with all that shield health, pretty incredible. I will show you now just how to get this, so you can give it a try yourself and have a play around. Okay, so in order to fly Vigilance. So firstly, you want to locate it and make sure to dock with it. This is one of the few that you can dock with. You either want to use no clip command, which is the TCL, or you just want to walk up to the main control room and then enter the UC Vigilance. So this is like the door that would take you to the cockpit, which will introduce a loading screen. So you would get into there, depending where you're up to in the quest and stuff, this may vary a little bit different, but yeah, basically you just want to find it, make your way to the cockpit. Now for me, I needed to kill everyone on the ship, at least uh, the people in the close vicinity in order to be able to fly the vessel. So for me, I was aligned with the UC system defense, so that will break ties, So just something to note. So once you sort of cleared the ship, there are a few characters that won't be able to be uh, killed, but they'll just go down to the floor on all fours. And then once we've sort of clear, we can get into the console. But first we need to make sure we're looking at the pilot seat because it will be, we will get the, you're not authorized to fly. So we want to put our cursor on the pilot seat, open the command and then click on the seat and we're looking for the, the F-U-R-N, which might be short for furniture, not sure, but we're looking for this. So make sure you click and scroll up or down to find the F-U-R-N. Once that is selected, then we need to enter call function, block activation, false, false, with quotations around the block activation. So I will put this command in the description so you can copy and paste it in. Once you've done that, that will actually allow you to sit in the chair and you will be able to fly the UC Vigilance. Now for me, when I got into the UC Vigilance, I had, uh, everything was fine. There was no damage to it. So I was able to fly it straight away. Now the next command we need to make to make it our home ship. While we're in this view, looking at the ship from behind, we want to hit the console command and then we want to click on our ship and you want to make sure you have the GBFM uh, Vigilance ship reference ID number in front of you. And then we want to enter the command, try set player home spaceship and then enter in that reference number, which is 00257103 for me. Might be the same for you, not too sure. And then with that entered comes your home ship in a way, but not really. So that's sort of it, that, that will give you the ship. You'll be in your inventory. Now, if you do find the vigilance and it's heavily damaged, I suggest using this command while you're in orbit, which is the COC New Atlantis spaceport that will take you to this technician. You'll be able to heal the ship and depending on how you go, you may be able to take off from here. You know, you won't see the UC Vigilance at the technician. It'll just be an invisible. Depending how it's worked for you, you may end up in a situation where your previous ship will come and land. Okay, in this next section, we're going to go through the process of actually rebuilding the Vigilance in a way to allow it to be flown as a home ship. It's pretty much the only method right now to be able to do that. But this will definitely help you get started. And now 
Let's get into it. We're going to be using lots of mods to do this and all the relevant mods that you need will be covered at the end. Now, luckily, the UC Vigilant is much more easy to find and get. Always has a set location. It's involved with the story. If you want to find it and make it your home ship, definitely check out that other video. Okay, let's get started. And here we have the UC Vigilant. Here's the longest legendary vessel, I'm pretty sure. And we're going to make it even longer. Absolutely stunning though. It is a behemoth. And look all these errors. So this has seven errors. We're going to clear all these one by one. First, we need to rename it to big bertha because it is an absolute beast now we're going to deal with the docker error the docker error is very easy to clear all we need to do is just remove four dockers that are on the uc vigilance because we'll have to place our own functioning docker make sure that we can actually use this as our daily vessel we're just going to go around to each of the sides and go and delete four in total and that turns us that gets us down to three errors which sounds awesome and easy the next part is connecting the docker to a landing bay what we're going to do is we're just going to gut under the cockpit similar to the shroud bearer now we do end up in the end making a few different changes to this is just to get some three by threes stack them together that's the landing bay under and then throw them in now we make this much more accessible if you build certain habs where it's just one vertical ladder straight up to the cockpit basically and i'd, I'd highly suggest doing that you're using this more regularly but yeah you can fully you, you can go nuts on customizing it we're gonna need two columns of the three by threes and then i'm just gonna get a three by one and have it kind of like a spine which will connect our cockpit to the landing bay and once we've sort of all got it prefabricated and ready to go we can just select it all now you can just double click and drag that into the guts and that is going to clear none of the errors because i actually was using the wrong type of landing bay the shipbed 200 landing bay does not work with this setup so i had to switch it out for the for the hope for landing bay which works very nicely and we just chuck that under the bottom now the good thing is having this at the front is this is much more accessible anywhere you are of course but uh it does help at least in atlantic city it's very nice and accessible so now we're just down to the last two errors so the docker for this is going to be an easy one to sort because we're just going to stack it at the top. It will just add an extra module and sit it at the very top and that will clear that error quite nicely and easily. Now, the most painful one is this unattached modules. This is extremely frustrating on the UC Vigilance because it's so big. It tends to be a bit more performance heavy. It's a lot slower. So many times you go to click one one thing, but you've clicked multiple and you're trying to duplicate it and you're wondering what's going on. But anyway, th there's a few different plum problems you'll come across. So we have to go through, figure out how we're going to get all these modules attached but before we do that we're going to change the engines up because these engines on the uc vigilance have no mobility in fact they give you negative mobility so we'll swap out the engines i tried to put on a few different ones but i think the best sort of one to go with is the quasar engines but we'll come back to these because i sort of because i changed the design a little bit but now we'll throw three on so but after that we need to replace some of these other modules that connect to our three by threes and our cockpit so to do that we just need to remove the ones that sit behind it the one or two six by three by three we just delete those we just grab those duplicate them delete the old ones put the new ones in the reason we do this is this is the only way you'll ever be able to clear this modules not attached error for whatever reasons this will fix that because duplicating them works for magic and then they actually count as real parts and connect as normal so we have to do that where any of these parts aren't connected to the main body of the ship so another example of that is this part at the front which definitely took quite a while to sort of figure out how to do so i tried replacing placing all the parts multiple times and I had no success but not get it to connect so I had to sort of change the overall design and extend it all out so what I did is I ended up pulling the nose forward and then I put in a six by three by three and then another six by three by three and then I duplicated the side pushed up front and basically just extended the ship out that way we can keep the exact shape and design as the original but what was cool is that we also got the extra cargo which we will replace with real cargo because these red ones are just placeholders they don't actually count as cargo then we're just going to go around and replace some of the side bits next we want to add some reactors i'm going to put three of the pinch 8c reactors line them up next to each other and then just chuck them on the back and then we're going to add a ton of fuel and keep in mind we have to replace any of the class n modules that we attach our class c modules to just so they connect properly and doesn't give us the unattached error so with the fuel and reactors attached looking quite good now now i did replace the cargo so we actually got real cargo on the uc vigilance but the trouble is it is very finicky and this took ages and what i should have done is attached all the weapons all the cargo and then start duplicating the big class m modules at the very end because what i did is i attached all the cargo then replaced the class m opponents so we didn't get the unattached error but then i added a whole ton of weapons and it just reignites that same not attached issue and you got to replace them all again so i ended up having to replace the same class m modules about three different times this took
took a couple hours to be honest but not doing that again so a really good tip for all this is add everything you want to then at the end do the duplication trick to get the modules actually attached as one whole ship so you can clear this last error because outside doing that it is extremely painful and slow so not everyone will want to waste their time like that or they'll just give up because it does it takes a lot of time it's very panic finicky so so moving on i did the cargo and then i wanted to add a ton of weapons so i was just duplicating the weapons that were on there i really liked the idea of having just a row of weapons on each side so i went and did that and then had to muck around for ages just getting all the class m modules duplicated and then finally after hours you've cleared the error so i just cleared the error and then i went and saved my game and then i just jumped back in because i just wanted to make a few more changes so i wanted to change the engines change a few other things so after i saved the game i went into the upgrade tab and strangely enough i could hook up the nova colony launch boosters which you should not be able to attach to this so the game allowed me to do it but we had to try this out and let's have a look what it looks like it becomes just this abomination it is absolutely humongous and you can fly it these engines even though they overlap and you'll get the error when you go into the ship builder you can still jump in fly it around and i'll just give you a little insight to what it looks like it kind of looks really cool to be honest but i noticed it didn't help with mobility at all and we'll come back to that but i'd always wanted to see those nova engines in action so that was cool to be able to actually test that out and see what it looked like so i had a bit of fun with that and then wanted to change it so i could get more mobility so i went back to the technician and just modified the back by duplicating some of the six by three by threes and the tails and expanded it out and then with that we could have five of the quasar engines looks kind of cool to me might not be for everyone but with all the weapons and the engines now fully complete we've cleared all the errors and it's happy days now we can just muck around get some really nice cool footage but one thing i forgot to mention is you need to add landing gear for the vessel to sit on top of the ground if you don't add landing gear it will just clip into the ground and you can't access it normally but if you add landing gear it's all good you can enter the ship just as normal you only need to really add one because the mods overwrite how many you need but i've just added a few for the purpose of this video and with all that done there you have it you've got the uc vista as your daily with some mad modification okay so we'll quickly go through mods that you'll need I'll put them all in the description so it'll just be easy to go there and click on the links and go through the download process. Now, I highly suggest using Mod Organizer 2. If you're using Vortex, bite the bullet, jump over to Mod Organizer 2. It handles plugins a lot better. It's just a much better and easy experience. Now, the install is all very simple for these mods. It's following instructions within the mod themselves. If you have any problems, you can reach out or check on the posts within the mods. They'll have all the details. People run into the same problems. So in no particular order, I've got the bigger ship size limit, the ultimate shipyards unlocked, and then you just want to make sure you have all the no engine power limits, the no grab drive, and so on and so forth. They'll be in the description because there's a few of those. It's going back to the ultimate shipyard unlocked. This will allow you to access all the ship modules from all the shipyards, in addition to be able to purchase M-class ship modules. Now, the other one I mentioned was the uh, saved unfinished ships. This one didn't work for me. It might work for you. Worth checking out. If it does, let me know if it works for you. This could save you a ton of time by not having to remove and attach all the pieces. But let me know how you go. So I'll say goodbye for now. That will be everything covered. And hope you got something out of this. Please consider liking, subscribing. Really appreciate it. Appreciate you. Peace out till next time.